everyone, it's Leslie from Colouring and Tangling. Every so often I just get this urge to colour illustrations in my own books and I haven't done any colouring for ages and ages and ages. And this one hasn't been coloured, this one's from Wild by Nature, my new colouring book that's just out. And nobody has actually coloured this one, this one's called Zebra Fairy. And I thought I'd start colouring today actually and just show you how I use these watercolour pencils. I love watercolour pencils for those of you that have been following me. These are not top of the range. These are Faber Castell watercolours um, and I use them in the studio with my kids that I teach. Um, they're just fine, they really are fine. And this is going to be a little bit of a magical um, painting. Um, there's going to be a lot of fun, there's going to be a lot of bright colours in it and I'm going to start with the zebra and I've looked out some colours already for um, the zebra and I've been practising my colour swatches here and for the zebra I'm thinking of using um, you know, pinks right through to purples and for the darker stripes on the zebra I'm going to use the cooler colours I'm going to use the blues going through to black so that is the plan. Uh, let me show you how these watercolour pencils blend if you've never used them before. I know that some of you are a little bit scared to use watercolour pencils but they are fun, fun, fun. So I tend to pick colours that are close to each other on the spectrum. They're much, much easier to blend. So let me do a little swatch and show you. So starting off with the lightest colour. And the next one, I tend to leave a little bit of a gap. And then I lighten up the pressure and do the merge, do the blend. So gently blending the, the darker colour into the lighter colour and then proceeding. It's important that you do the blending first before you add the water. You're doing the groundwork first before you actually add the water. So that's my second darkest colour. Then I'm going to make it a little bit more purplish, leaving a gap. Going back into the previous colour, doing that merge. That seamless blend. I'm leaning a little bit heavier now. So I'll be doing the zebra stripes like this. And then ending with this darker, deeper purple. And that should work really nicely for the for our zebra. Well, let's put the water on that, show you what it looks like. I'll get a little bit of water off camera here. Start with the light and it just magically dissolves the pencil into paint. Go back and do your blend, just taking it out. You can dilute it further if you want to. And then just blending it into the darks. Can go all the way back if you want to, just to get that perfect blend. And that's it. I'm working onto cartridge paper, not top of the range cartridge paper, but it's a step up from just normal photocopy paper, otherwise your paper's going to wrinkle like crazy. So this is a budget um, cartridge paper, I think it's only about 90, 100, no, 110 GSM I think. And it will wrinkle a little bit, but look it serves my purposes for these um, videos. And unfortunately I, I did order some really nice beautiful thick cartridge paper and it's just beautiful and unfortunately my printer doesn't take it, it um, just spits it out, so that was a bit disappointing. So these are the colours that I'm going to use in the majority of the zebra, or well, some of the stripes in the zebra. And then for the darker stripes, I'm going to use these colours, so the blues. So let's try these. Just forgetting the order, I think this was um, the lightest one. I don't want to make them too pale, because these are really for the dark stripes. I'm going to start off with this uh, sort of mid-blue. It's very important, I think, to have all of your colours pre-planned before you do a colouring, you know, like choosing your palette. There's nothing worse than not being prepared, not working out your colour scheme and then you're in the middle of the, the drawing, especially if you've only got um, one book you know, and you, you haven't got a PDF where you can just quickly print out another page. 
it's really important to work out your colour scheme in advance. So I'm thinking that these would be really nice for the dark stripes on the zebra. So playing around with warm and cool. Doing that merge again. And then I'm going to finish off with black. And I may even take the black down and dull it all down a little bit because I want to make this sort of darkish. I don't want to just do black stripes, I want to actually have some blue in it, but I will take the black through it, I think. And we'll see, this will be a um, trial and error. I'm going to do the, the purples today um, to show you, but then in um, further episodes I'll probably play around with this. But let's see what it looks like when we dampen it. I definitely want these to be dark. I think that should be perfect, actually. Yep. No, I'm just cleaning out my brush off camera and I want to take that black back through and ease that off. So I think that's going to be a really nice dark stripe but seeing the hints of blues and greens through there. So that's me worked out my colours and now I'll um, proceed to actually showing you how I do it on the zebra. Okay. I'm just checking you can see this properly on camera. It's a little bit of a dull room this. It's where I it's where I work, but um it's a dark house actually and I don't have any um really nice sunny spots, so light is always a bit of a problem for me when I do these videos. So hopefully it's not going to be too dark for you. Alright. I'm going to start with the zebra and do exactly what I showed you before. I'm going to do in behind. So where's my, I have lost a colour, here we go. So start up here I think, maybe do the ear. So I'm going to start with this pale pink. This one is the grey lines. For those of you that are in my colouring group or follow me in social media or get my newsletter, you'll know that this book Wild by Nature and has got lots of options. It's giving you the option of grey lines onto white, grey lines onto night skies, and it's also giving you the option of black lines onto light, light backgrounds, and black lines onto the midnight skies, the night skies. So hopefully appealing to all colours. We've all got different desires in our colouring pages. Some of you prefer a grey line because you don't want to see that dark outline. Others maybe prefer to have that clean dark line that you can follow a little bit better. So hopefully this book gives you lots and lots of options. So taking my time. And now uh, I've been so busy um, doing the, the illustrations for the book that I I really don't treat myself often enough to colouring and I do miss it, I really do miss it. Especially seeing how my own illustrations come to life. I got an amazing colouring team and I'd like to thank you all publicly on, um, on camera again. Um, your talent is incredible and the illustrations, I think you'll agree that you've seen by my very small, beautiful team, have been absolutely exceptional. And I'd be lost without these um, these ladies. Oh, and we've got one, we've got one guy now in the team, Gabriel. I'd be lost without you, just bringing them to life. So I'm finishing this little bit off with the dark purple. And that's how I envisage the zebra to be. The darker stripes are going to be the other colour scheme that I showed you. And just hopefully it will be nice and relaxing to do this. I'm going to try to remember the order that I did this in. So it's Australia where I work and um, teach and live and I live in uh, the Redlands area of Queensland in Australia and it's actually our winter at the moment and it's coolish but today's actually a really lovely 
quite warm actually, sunny day outside. It's cool in the evenings and it's cool in the mornings. And I actually personally love that because coming from Scotland, which is a very cold climate most of the year, I like it. I don't mind the cold. And I believe that in Britain at the moment, it's you sweltering over there with heat waves and sweat lashing off you and the weather's going crazy. It's just going crazy. So you can see that this is not taking you that long to do actually. It's a little bit tricky seeing where because I've got the grey lines, so I've just got to make sure I don't put the colour in the wrong stripes. So she looks more like a girl, doesn't she, my zebra? I mean, really, there's there's no right or wrong way of doing this. She looks like a girl with her pinks and her purples. And got something underneath is picking something up. So the book's been getting a lot of praise, this Wild by Nature book that's just out, and thank you for your lovely comments and your your enthusiasm, that really, really does mean a lot because it keeps us going. Being artists, it's very solitary, and we're in our studios all by ourselves, mm -hmm. working on our ideas and just hoping that you colourists love them, but it's very lonely and Thank you for your support and your feedback in the group. Well, that's that little bit done. Yes, it's been getting a lot of um, a lot of praise, so I'm very happy about that. Well, I'm actually running a couple of lucky draws in my colouring group. Now, if you don't know what my colouring group is, it's Leslie Smithering Gale's Art Colouring Group on Facebook. And to launch the new book, I'm doing a couple of lucky draws. And I provided you with free a couple of free illustrations from the new book. One of them is um, The Leopard Queen. And the other one is Penguin Pals. They're no longer free, I'm sorry, but I put them up there um, several times for you to download. And we've got some lovely colourings coming in of those. So the lucky draw is not happening until uh, later on in August. I can't remember the date. 22nd of August, I think, roughly. There'll be um, some prizes. There'll be a a PDF of the book, there'll be a six pack um, of the illustrations from the book and there'll be a, a single page from the book so there'll be two lots of those on offer and it's not skill based it's just um, entering your finished colourings in the albums up there so I'd love you to join if you're not currently a member of uh, my group there's a lovely bunch of people in there, very supportive of me and the other colourists. So you see I'm not really following a plan here, I'm just enjoying the colour. And for today's episode I won't make it too long. I'm going to do this over a few episodes. And there's nothing worse than watching a mega, mega, mega long video of somebody else colouring. Just bite-sized chunks. And it's a good chance for me to get back into colouring again. So all I'm doing really is alternating the colours, overlapping them, doing the blend dry. And I'm doing only certain stripes. I want to leave some of the stripes for the cool palette. And I'll put a little bit of water on this section too so that you can see what that looks like. 
I debated long and hard about this one. And I think one of the hardest things, and I hear you lots talk about this as well, the hardest thing ever, isn't it, is to choose your colour scheme. Choose your colour palette. There's so many options in this one. I knew I wanted to make it bright and colourful, but I just didn't know what to do, what colours, warm, cool. But when I analysed this one, I really looked at this, I thought, well, I've got the grass, which I thought would you know, be greenish blues, that kind of thing. So I didn't want to make the zebra green and blue, so that narrowed that down a little bit for me. Um, and I thought, well, I want to make it sort of warmish. Um, and I, I do love this colour scheme of the lilacs and the, and the pinks and the reds, so I ended up going with that. And, but wanted to mix some cool in or have some cool in the picture as well. So hence doing the darker stripes with the blues. And when it comes to our zebra fairy, I really don't know, I haven't worked that out yet, how I'm going to colour her. But that will come. Sometimes you don't really know until you actually start. It's very, very difficult to have the whole thing worked out in advance. So, I think just don't overanalyse it really and just pick a colour scheme, go with it, start it. I will be honest here and say that the PDFs are my preference, I think, when it comes to the colouring because they really do give you a chance to experiment more. And whereas if you buy a book, you, I think you get uptight because you know that if you make a mistake in the book, you've sort of almost ruined the whole book unless you scan the pages first. But with PDFs, you've got that luxury of being able to print them out, just print another one out if you make a mistake. You've got that luxury of having the file there to do that and you can experiment by printing them onto different papers, you know, your favourite papers, experimenting with cartridge paper. Some of you love working onto that, um, the toned papers, it's Strathmore toned paper. You know, you could even try printing it onto watercolour paper, but all printers are different. My printer rejected the thicker cartridge paper which is a shame. I might have to outsource the printing to do that. But it does give you that flexibility um, and I know that some of you say well printing the cost of inks is really expensive but you have to weigh all these things up really haven't you? I mean if you pay a lot of money for your, for the actual book it may be cheaper you know for you to actually just print them. Print the, some of you like a finished book though don't you? You like a bound book where you can have all your colourings in but you could get them spirally bound after you colour the PDF, you know, the pages. You could actually have the book bound afterwards. Well, again, it's, it's up to you. There's lots of options out there. Normally I would turn my paper around if this is looking awkward, it's because I don't want to turn the paper around and then it would be off camera. I'll try it a little bit so it's just a little bit tricky trying to colour in this direction. Let's see, here we go. And I think then once you've got all your colours worked out and you know what's going where, you can then relax and actually just enjoy working with the colours. I'm very scared to do a live. That's the one thing I haven't done yet as a as an artist who produces colouring books. I'm, I'm a little bit scared to do a live video. <laughs> it's just my personality. And I don't I haven't sort of worked that all out yet, so I probably one of these days will have to pluck up the courage and do a live video, but the other problem we've got with lives is that you know, so many of you live in so many different countries 
that it's really, really difficult, if not impossible, to get a time that would suit you all. Living in Australia, you know, the time differences are huge. It makes it very awkward. This bit's all going to be cool, this is going to be dark, so I'm going to keep the nose of the zebra to the greens, the greens, the dark greens and the blues. I'll keep going with the other stripes. We'll just get this head part done. I'll put the water on, which is the, my favourite part in the whole process, putting the water on. Now you can get really deluxe watercolour pencils. These are, um, as I say, more of a student grade. My, one of my students has got ink tents and I know that some of you have the ink tents are ink based but they are, I've never used them but I do have one art student who is going to be using them for a painting he's doing of koi of fish and it's going to be gorgeous and he's bringing in his own ink tense pencil so I'll have a little look at those and maybe maybe Nicholas will give me a a try of them. And they, I believe, are ink based and beautiful and rich and deluxe. But with, I find the colours fairly intense with these two. I really don't mind the Faber Castell. I don't have any problems with them whatsoever. They're really nice to use. I think we can all get a little bit carried away with wanting the very best art materials we can get our hands on no matter what the cost, but you know, if you're practicing your skill for it, you can make anything work for you at the end of the day. When it gets a little bit tight up here, the stripes are very close to each other, so I'm going to have to be careful here. This is a little bit fiddly. Thank you to those of you who have um, followed me for a while and have been loyal supporters and have purchased my books. It really does mean a lot and I'd like to thank you again for that because really if nobody was buying my work I'd, there's not really much incentive to continue and not to mention paying the bills and surviving and I can't not do art. My poor husband has had to put up with me being an artist and not giving up on that. I do have another job, a little part-time job that I do as well though. Alongside this. Okay, I might just make this a little bit thicker here. And that's that little section done. So we'll do, we'll finish off this little bit here, this little bit in here. The other thing I want to do more of is use different media. I haven't got a huge budget for art materials but I do have some Copic markers and I'd really love to get more proficient at using the Copic markers. Now Belinda, a faithful girl, she has done a couple of amazing colourings from my books and she I call her the fearless colourist because she really does have no fear of using Copic markers. She just is so bold and they always end up beautiful. Whereas they scare me a little bit. I'm not quite as comfortable blending the Copic markers. And I think I'm also aware of the price of refilling them and you know if I make a mistake and I've got to I'm using up ink and you know all of that stuff that goes on in our heads. She's great. Thank you for helping me, Belinda, with my my launches of uh, the last two books with your colourings from them. 
and also Sean over at Colour with Canvas. He's actually doing live colouring of Penguin Pals from the new book. He's in the UK and Belinda's Australian. But Sean is from the UK. He's doing a great job of colouring Penguin Pals. So thank you Sean too for your help there and your support of me and the new book. But it's been so hot in the UK that Sean had to cancel his last um, episode, the final episode of Colouring Penguin Pulse. It was just so hot and sticky and you can't colour when your pencils are sticking to you. Your hand even sticks to the paper, doesn't it? Well, we know about hot climate in Australia, that's for sure. Enjoying the winter while it lasts. Alright, nearly finished this little bit. Just darkening up some areas. Just trying to get a really nice balance of all the different shades that I'm using. And we've just got a couple of little bits to finish off here. It's going to be a very bright and cheery zebra. Excuse me sniffing, I've got a few allergies. I think Sean's the same. You've got allergies, Sean, but no, I've got allergies too. Uh, we've got three cats. I shouldn't really have them, but I love them. So a lot of you have said to me, look I really struggle with blending and it's kind of hard to explain but I think blending to me is really about the merging of one colour into another colour seamlessly. So you do not want to see where one colour starts and another one stops or the other way around. You don't want to see where one colour stops and a new one starts. And the way I do it is it's pressure, it's how heavy or lightly you lean with your pencil. And I sometimes do a little circly motion just to get the blends happening. It's all feel and it's practice, it really is practice. But with the watercolour pencils you don't have to get this right because we're going to be adding water to this and you're going to re-blend, it will um, change it drastically it will change it drastically. The colours get more vivid when you add the water. Now this little bit up here above the eye, I might leave that for now. And there's a lot of, oh that could be a colour, we'll do this little bit. It gets a little bit tricky with the stripes actually. Right. Let's stop there and we'll do the water. So off camera I'll just show you, have got a little tub of water and the brushes we want to use are watercolour brushes. So the round tip ones, the really nice ones, buy what you can afford obviously. And we want to choose the right size of brush for the job so I've got a range here of watercolour brushes. Sable is the best that you can buy but look there's a lot of artificial sable or uh, mock sable brushes around now and they're brilliant I don't know what they're made of whether they're nylon or but they're really really nice so you don't have to spend a lot of money okay let's um, get the water happening not too much water and we're just going to take it a section at a time and don't panic and it just dissolves the paint, uh, the pencil, and turns it into paint. And you can go back and forth 
I'm just going to grab a little paper towel. Because what I like to do sometimes is dry off my brush a little bit. Now what you mustn't do, or what you must try to avoid doing, is stopping in the middle of putting the water on the section because when the water dries it leaves a hard edge. So you want to finish a section first or it will leave a hard edge. And just take your time and do each little section. Be aware of dipping your brush into the water if you've got a dark colour. If you finish with a dark colour and you don't want that dark colour to merge and ruin the light colour, you just have to dip your brush into the water and start with a clean brush. You can go in both directions. So you see the colour is actually intensifying. It's actually deeper and brighter than it was with the colour just with the pencil, which is really nice. You never know what to expect. Don't use too much water or you'll flood it and you'll make mistakes. And go down a brush size if it's if it's just um, you know you're not getting that control. Go down a brush size. Choose a smaller brush. You need a steady hand because the water will sort of flow. It's so fun to use. Now I've gone over that little stripe there. There's a mistake but we're not going to stress because I'm going to be colouring that with the greens and the blues and we won't see it. But as long as you finish a little section you'll be fine. And keep going. Now I could go down a brush size. I probably have to choose a smaller brush for these really fiddly little bits over here. And I think with watercolour it's probably easier to do the lighter areas first in case you do have the bleeds because if you're putting darker colours on next to it you can camouflage that. You won't see your little mistakes by the time you've finished. So I'm just going over all the stripes that I did with the watercolour pencil trying to remember. You can usually tell which ones you've done with the water and which ones you haven't because they change. We're down to here. We might swap back to the bigger brush. Where's my bigger brush gone? And watercolour is not ever supposed to go on, you know, it's not truly flat. There's all these little nuances and blends and accidental things that you will see happening that, that I just love. You know, you just never know how it's going to work out. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's watery and beautiful and you see all these lovely textures and with the way the colours all merge together. It's gorgeous. But it's not like Copic markers which are really smooth. These are more of a textural, semi-translucent sort of effect you're getting really. Now here I don't want to flood that bit there with the purple. So this is an instance where I would really be wanting to 
clean out the brush. Sometimes you can dip it, you know, I'm putting on a little bit of tissue if you don't want a lot of water on your brush. If you've got too much water in your brush, you can just have a, have a tissue on you the whole time. Really handy. I've done that one, but I don't think I've done this one. Not sure, I may have already done it, I don't think so. Gorgeous colours. And then we've got this little bit down here. I was going to change brushes there, but I'll just continue with this one, I think. I might just go with that little white bit there. Okay, I'm pretty sure that is every area done now with the colour and I think she's looking absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to stop there and that was the, that's the first introduction to watercolour pencils for some of you. Hopefully you will enjoy using them and lose your fear and just have fun with them and I will come back again and continue this colouring and it's been fun. And I'll see you next time. Bye.